Welcome to Center of Light, my beautiful friends. Good to see you here on a Sunday night. First and foremost, happy Memorial Day to you. How can we be happy in memory of those who have fallen? Tonight's presentation is, I've fallen and I can't get a life alert. Presentation idea by Elwood Kowalt. Thank you, Elwood. Double entendre, two meanings. Memorial Day, remembering those who have fallen. But also, what about you? What about when you have fallen? Are you fallen now? Have you fallen from grace? Is what mostly this presentation is going to be about. We all, throughout our lives, have fallen from grace. So I want to take this time to say um, I'm dedicating this show. I want you to hear me clearly. I have a real big issue with war, the mili military industrial complex, military might. I don't lean into it. The reason I'm being clear about my dedication on Memorial Day to those who have fallen, it doesn't include those who go to war. They screwed us over. They bombed my country. They collapsed the towers. They did this. They did that. I'm going to sign up for the military and go kill me some people. They're not included. The people that are included to this dedication are those in the 60s and before that were drafted. They had no choice. They were yanked out of their everyday situation to go kill people. You are included. You didn't ask to do it. Somehow you felt you had no choice. But for those who go into the military for the right reasons. I'm going there because I feel it in my soul, in my gut. There's no way I cannot go do this thing that have fallen. This show is dedicated to those people. But tonight's presentation really is about I've fallen And I can't get up. Those dark nights of the soul. We have all fallen. And if you have not, don't put your seatbelt on. Take it off. Because when it's your turn to fall, and if you don't fall, I am so happy for you about that. But when it's your turn to fall, if such a situation should ever arise in your life, Take off your seatbelt. <clears throat> because you are in for the ride <laughs> of your life. Because when you fall, you will realize on the outset of it, where your living needs to occur, what your life is truly about, Let me acknowledge everybody who's here. Hello, everyone. Happy Memorial Day. Robert Harrison's in here. Troublemaker. <laughs> A. Chuck Reddit. What's up, bro? AC, it's been a while. Kim Bellardini. Danielle says, I am against war, too. I prefer working for peace. David Emerson. Jack Brewer. Natalie Lavoie. Hi, Natalie. I hope you're well since our last talk, girl. David Amerson says, love to you brothers and sisters. Facebook love, Pope. Elwood Cowalt, Ricky V2. John Bones Rogers. What's up, Bones, if you're still here? Let me look in the room in this fashion. Elwood, David, Ames Archer. What's up, girlfriend? <clears throat> Robert, Danielle, Kim Belladini. As I said, the Lavoie-age, Natalie, is here. So tonight's presentation is, I've fallen and I can't get up. 
per Elwood's request. It's a beautiful metaphor. And I use the life alert. I've fallen and I can't get up. Banner. As a play on things. And it does not trivialize those people who have truly fallen and they can't get up. Life alert. Are you in a dark night of the soul? Even if it's mild. It don't have to be a wild one. Even if it's a mild one. It could be about your job. It could be about your finances. It could be about someone leaving your experience. It could be about this, that, or the other thing. But the most important thing is that you pay tribute. This is amazing how this is all just coming together, at least for me in this moment. That you pay tribute or memorial to the death of you. You soldier, on this Memorial Day, some part of you is dying and or has died. And it's important that you memorialize that aspect of yourself. I was in a 10-year relationship many years ago when it went belly up. Keith died. The one I knew then, he died. Simply, he died. That's such a memorial for me. I can't go back. Even if that person called me up and said, hey, it's been 20 years. Let's get back together. I would say that is sacred ground. Not that I can't tread on it because I'm not worthy. It taught me valuable wisdom that changed my life. It gave me life. So now because of love, I am truly alive. Hindsight 2020, now I can go back and memorialize that time in my life. Happy Memorial Day. How can we be happy when it's about death? Death, ironically, is the greatest transition in life, is it not? with the intention of going back to your maker. So tonight's presentation, I've fallen and I can't get up, not up in heaven in the clouds, up meaning inward, so I can move upward in my life, which is forward. I've fallen and I can't get up. It is my aim, aims archer, as an archer would, I like this little play. I'm aiming to focus on the bullseye, the point of it all. So the point of any death is to bring about liberation. The intentions of birth and death are the same. To unite you With life. I don't mean your life. I mean you taking the opportunity of your life to experience a greater degree of life than you have ever known before. But it requires your death. It requires an aspect of you to die. Are you willing to put to rest an idea of you whose time has come so that in five years hence, you can look back and memorialize that part of you that has died? Are you willing to die to gain life? Are you willing to die to be alive? 
Are you willing to die to be alive? Master Jesus himself did exactly just that. <laughs> I'm looking at my shirt. So it's not about tapping out and giving up. Whatever, this way. It's about tapping in and rising up. You may be down on your knees praying, dear God. Your prayer is beautiful, provided. It's a supplication of one that is, take this from me, that won't work. It will never happen and you're wasting your beautiful energy. And you will exhaust those energies. And nothing will change. But when you tap in versus I'm tapping out, uncle, 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 I give, I give, I give, match, winner, to tapping in to you create a match for yourself and you bring it into your experience and then you truly become the winner. Not above someone else's loss. But it does require you to lose, have lost an aspect of yourself. You have to die to live. You have to die to live. Let's see who is up in here. Hello, Beth. Let me see if I can pronounce his name. Balserzak? I think I did pretty good. I think I got it. Beth, if that's right, give me an exclamation point. If not, please spell it phonetically. Balsa Zach. Hello, Beth. Charlotte says, good point. So well said, Keith. I am willing. Oh, my God, Danielle. You, you see, that's the deal. Ames Archer says, yes. Ron Gotro. It's a door to a new life to change for the better. Hi, Sonny. Katarina. What's up, Katarina? I wish I was on the catamaran <laughs> in a new life. Mary. Hi, Mary. De Stefano. Judy Ride. Reed. Hello, Kelly. Beautiful Kelly and all her avianness. <laughs> Birdness. Charlotte says, at a pool party, talking about you to a friend. Ha, ha, ha. Hello, friend. What is your friend's name? I'd like to meet her, at least, or a person, guy, to say hi. Hey, Kelly. So tonight we're talking about dying. You want, no, Keith, I don't want to die. You want to die. You want to die. Die, mother, die. Until you do, all you will know is sameness. I have fallen and I can't get up. Let's talk about before I go into commercial break, I'm, a set, I'm setting up the stage. The times in your life, if it's now, awesome. If you had it and you've lost it, for who, for, for who the bell tolls, <laughs> time marches on. If you're in such a place, if you ever come into such a place, space, and within you, my aim, as I said earlier, my aim's archer. Archer, aim, you have to aim, you have to focus, you hit bullseye target. Is by the time the end of this presentation happens, that you have, have a greater understanding and or a greater possibility in the form of in sight. In sight, in sight. Something is in your grasp. It's in sight. An understanding. That if you're going through such a place, no matter how trivial, how to whatever degree it is, some part of you really wants to die. Anytime you come up against trouble, challenges, God is saying, die, my friend, die. Because I will bring forth new life. I don't mean God in heaven. I mean that conscience, 
that feeling of well-being that speaks to all of us? Are we so involved in the rat race that we can't hear it? That voice, that conscience that says, please die. I want to give you life. Stick around. I'll be right back. Get into the thick of this presentation. Hello, all my beautiful friend. I love you like crazy. Beyond measure, in fact. Trust that I will guide you in whatever you do. Just remember to breathe and do your very best to live in love. Give in love. Be in love. And love you shall receive.
Welcome back to Center of Light. Good to see you here on Memorial Eve night. Tonight we are speaking about I've fallen and I can't get up. It's a play on the commercial for Life Alert. Life Alert for everyone. Life Alert. I've fallen and I can't get up. Are you in that situation in your life? Are you having a tough time? In any aspect of your life, it doesn't have to necessarily be a dark night of the soul. Do you feel that some part of life is kicking you in your pants and you just can't seem to recover from it? This is very powerful stuff that I'm going to share with you now. I don't even know what it is. I'm waiting for it to come in. When life happens to you in this way, that you try and try and try. You need to let it die and die and die. But this is all I know. Okay, if you let it die, then you make room for something else to be born. To have it happen in your life. So you can come out of the dark night of the soul at that particular aspect of your life. Are you in a dark night of the soul? I promise you, Five years hence, from this dark night of the soul, you will find yourself very much alive. More so than if you never went through the experience. Happy Memorial Day. Because that aspect of you is going to die if it is not balanced and congruent with the universal plan. Which is always moving in the life stream, the conscious life stream, towards down the timeline of your future potential to become everything that you are. And if you don't become everything that you are, it's okay. Just know that you potentially have... No. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. What's up, Aginos, my bro? If you don't allow those aspects of yourself to die and celebrate this Memorial Day for the aspects of you that have died and are going to die, you're going to find yourself wishing that you died gracefully. Hello? Do you feel me? If you're going to die, you might as well die now. So, a very important, the reason you came back to earth, aspect, part of you, can be born again, so you that you may live blissfully. Not missfully. Like I'm constantly missing things. Because if you don't know how to do it, please die. Keep in memory that aspect of yourself that taught you so much. But if you clutch, and you clutch tight and with all your fucking might, you're losing sight of all that could be the possible light for you to bring you to another place of absolute life. Where do you think you're going in this life? I've fallen and I can't get up. Your trying is acknowledged and recognized that you're trying to get up from this particular area of your life. I want to share something with you about prayer. Prayer is powerful beyond measure. Erroneous prayer takes you everywhere but near what you call pleasure. You may think that you're praying and supplicating on your knees. I've fallen and I can't get up. may take you to a place of grace. I'm here to tell you, prayer is a little more important and powerful than one may understand. Where are my prayer warriors? Lots of people on social media say, 
I'm warning you. Careful. Your intention is beautiful. Where are my prayer warriors? When you're in a dark night of the soul because someone you love is in the hospital, may not serve you at all. And you don't want to be a contributing factor to five years hence and reflecting back memorial to the one that left the earth because of your good intentions. Good intentions are not enough. It requires consciousness. Conscious intentions. Where are my prayer warriors? I need you. When you have hundreds upon however many people on bended knee supplicating to God, the universe, life alert God, life alert God, I've fallen and I can't get up. What you're telling your maker is life alert, life alert, which means soon to be death. Life alert. Alert implies death. Hence the button, the old lady in the commercial. I've fallen and I can't get up because if you don't come to me soon, I am going to die. Life alert. Where are my prayer warriors? Depending on what doctrine, code, creed, or sect you grew up in, prayer can kill you. You don't believe me? Go to North Carolina, where they handle snakes, vipers. If your prayer is not aligned and you show any sign of fear, the viper will bite you and potentially kill you if they don't get you to the hospital quick enough. And their faith is strong. Their faith is strong. Their belief and faith is so strong. They're willing to handle vipers, the devil, snake. So those who have absolute faith have been doing this for 40 whatever years, they never get bit. Doesn't mean there can come a time to where they do. Even if they woke up on the wrong side of the bed and their faith wasn't fully engaged that day they went to church and handled snakes. The snake doesn't say... <laughs> Well, for 40 years, you were so faithful. Today, because you're not in your groove, I'm not going to bite you. It's a snake. <laughs> so where are my prayer warriors when you get all of these people backing you up who are not clear in intention? Not to mention... that the ascension of your situation may not go where you want it to go. I would be very, very careful if I were you. Very careful. Because when you have people who live in a fear mindset, oh my God, I want to pray for this person because I'm so scared. Be careful. Let's see who is in the room. Krista. What's up, Krista Huggins? Mark Ravi. What's up, Mark? Bob Cyberg says, Right here, brother, my thoughts are monitored constantly. Main question is, am I consciously thinking about what it is that I want to think about? Crappy thinking is crappy, crappy prayers. Let me read that again, Bob.
main question is I am consciously thinking about what it is that I want to think about. Crap. Bob, what I think you're asking and what I would like to offer to you, my friend. It's good to see you, by the way, bro. It's been a while <laughs> since I at least seen your Facebook post, Mark Zuckerberg algorithm thingy. Regardless of what we think, it is by choice, conscious or unconscious. We need to understand that our thoughts are not our own manufacturing. You do not manufacture your thoughts. Thoughts are your past that lives inside of all of us. Our past. These are thoughts. This is what I think. This is what I was told to think. This is what I hope to think because of my evaluation and self-inquiry about all those things I was taught and told to think. Regardless, it is a choice. God says, if God is for me and with me, then what do I need to worry about all those other garbage charts? That's correct, sir. That is correct. That requires a... <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. As long as we live in those thought modalities that has never served us, because that's what we're told is strategy and strategic and what works. If it's not working, that aspect of ourself needs to die. So it does, Bob, become about surrendering. But that's so hard to do. Happy death, whoever you are. Happy Memorial Day whoever you're unsuns in the house let me acknowledge everyone and i'm going to get to some of the comments here elwood krista unsun kelly beth sana sani pri hey pri robert agi bob katarina i'm dancing around my camera so i can see so in the room a few things were said let me go back as far as my feed will allow me yes danielle it's a door to new life when you die. Even when you physically die, it's a door to new life. Beth says, I'm laughing. Just saw your show title. I've fallen and I can't get up. I did fall and I broke my foot. That's what I'm hoping, a new life. Beth, this is so analogous and parallels and so on point to this presentation. I've fallen and I've broken my foot. If, Beth, you understand in the future that as you look back on your life in hindsight, 2020, why you have fallen and broken your foot. It can be, ha, the step towards a new life. When you break your foot, or anything to do with your legs and feet moving forward, it's because, B, when you're in a state of being, you always create a cause and effect. When you understand that, is it possible that I've broken my foot because I fell? When you understand the thought process that one step broken foot, leads to the next, leads to the next, leads to the next. You simply misstep and fall and break your foot. When you understand that, a new life begins to happen. Because in your awareness of why you fell in the first place and broke your foot, with the inability to continue to move forward, no longer is there a need <laughs> for you to ever break your foot. That's how it works. Sorry. <laughs> Anyone. Hello, Krista. Ruth Dotty Dartry. What's up, girl? Unsun says, that was good, Bob. Probably not. My bro Robert says, Labu Labu thought you might want some French fries with that hamburger. June Pellegrin. What's up, girlfriend? It's good to see you, June. Hope Jennifer as well as well. Jennifer as well as well. Unsun says, crappy thoughts, crappy prayer. 
Does this mean that maybe the prayer has no energy? No, lo no love and intention in it. Intention is everything, but sometimes it can also be not enough. Clarity is most important. In those prayers, where are my prayer warriors? Trust me, when someone that you love is in a grave situation, grave, a dying situation that you one day will memorialize, be it in a healthy way, or that you lost your loved one, you don't want someone praying for you who is not in a clear space. Be careful with summoning up your prayer warriorship. My father's calling me. Let me say hi to my dad. See what happens. Hello, dad. Hey, man, what you know? I am on a live presentation, so right now everyone across the world can hear you. How you doing, dad? Oh, I love it. Yes, he's growing well. <laughs> that boy's yeah. eating me out of house and home. Okay, well, he's, uh, he's got a check in the mail coming to him, but I want to talk to him. But that's all right. Look, I just want to wish him a happy birthday. Okay? I will make it a point to tell him to call you tomorrow. And uh, he's uh, he's up. T he, his head is up to my eyebrows now. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. All right, then. Yeah, enjoy your program. All I right? love you, Father. Okay. All See right, you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was my beautiful dad, one of the most amazing men I have ever known in my life. He's calling to wish my tomorrow son's 14th birthday and to tell him he had a check in the mail. <laughs> How? <laughs> Pri says, I love that accent. May yes, it's from South Louisiana by New Orleans down there. It's very broken. It incorporates English and French. So we can call that uh, Fringlish. Jesse, Ber Jesse Berthelots knows about the uh, Cajun accent. That's where he's from. <laughs> Hello, Brenda. Let's see. Uh, there was a few other comments I want to get to. And then I'm going to play some videos. My brother Aggie says, hi, hello, hello. Bragi, uh, Agi, in your native tongue, would you tell me hello, hello? I want to see what it sounds like and spelled like. Bob says, dying is one of the sweetest gifts I learned or I just remembered what I have forgotten. Blessings, bro, for sure. What's up, Sonny? Bob says, remember, opinions are like the sun's like sunglasses, Bob says, remember opinions are like sunglasses. The more opinions you are looking through, the further from the truth you have traveled. That is the grapevine effect. You tell someone something in their ear, 20 people down the line, it doesn't sound anywhere the same. What's up, Brett Walker? Robert Harrison says, Cajun. Oh my God. Cajun as it comes. So now we're going to move to the video segment of this presentation, which tonight is titled, I Have Fallen and I Can't Get Up. Though it is a play on the Life Alert commercial, it does parallel with tonight's presentation, which is, Hello, my cosmic brothers and sisters. Life Alert, if you have fallen and you can't get up, that's why I'm here. I love you. I'm here as your friend, your brother, your teacher. You're way sure to lean on, and sometimes I need someone to lean on, and I know you're there because of the trust that we have between us. Whether you choose to be my friend or not is not your choice. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? You are my friend, and in that you have no choice. Life alert. I've fallen and I can't get up. It doesn't have to be a dark night of the soul. 
It could be a dark night of one aspect of your life. Either way, I'm going to help you stand. Hence what I said, my, where are my prayer warriors? It's not enough. You have to get off of your knees. Kneeling is integral. It's the foundation and it's basic and it requires the first aspect of your soul. Kneeling. When you're done kneeling, you have to stand up and declare your power. Then, in the moment to the very hour, the grace of God will shower everything upon you. No spiritual energy, deity, angelic form can ever intervene with your life. Ever. Never, never, never. It will happen. Never. It will happen. But when your prayer becomes, Oh my God, I'm praying for my sick friend and I hope they don't die because I'm scared that they die. Two, in the shift of, Oh my gosh, I love my beautiful friend and I hope that you support me in the energy I need to push forth to my friend that they can spend more time with me upon this earth changes the whole dynamic. Let me express to you with e what erroneous prayer can look like. Erroneous prayer is, take this from me. It could be a matter of energy as to why you're using such words. But most people are not privy to being conscious fully to know that words have power. When you say verses, take this from me to empower me with what I need to, be, to become victorious myself. Spiritual energies will rush to you in the matter of a moment to help you. Take this from me will get you nowhere. Involve me in this fully and consciously will get you everything you want. Very important. Sadhguru. I'm going to play maybe one, maybe two. Tonight, the rock star is Sadhguru. He's always, a, he's always the rock star. If you're going to die, literally, I understand the fright. Well, how do you understand that, Keith? You're not the one dying right now. Oh, I have died in my past reincarnations. Incarnations. To understand, death is... Hello? Got a search warrant. We're coming in. I get it. Intuitively, I understand it. Not only literally that you're going to die, and I'm not trying to trivialize and make light of your situation, but let's bring that situation to the light. In your dying, you're going to live. That should give you some motivation and joy to get out of the fright, simply moving back to the nature of who you are, the light. Sadhguru. I love this man beyond measure. Mm. <laughs> Love him. Look at yourself. When you were five years of age, how joyful and alive you were. Now, how joyful. <laughs> Your aliveness, has it gone up or come down? Huh? Come down. See, with age, Aliveness need not come down. Physical agility may come down. But once aliveness need not come down with age, aliveness is going down means you are committing suicide in installments. You have become so dead serious about it simply because you are not conscious that you are a mortal life, you have come with an expiry date. 
just to tell you, since we… since I came and sat here, you are one and a quarter hours closer to the grave. Yes. If you think about it once in a way, you will become fearful. If you are constantly conscious, you will become fully, fully alive, not half alive, one hundred percent alive. Will you promise me this much? Tomorrow morning, if you wake up, hey, there is no guarantee like that. Is there anybody who is a guaranteed life? No. Nearly a quarter million people will not wake up tomorrow morning in this world. Natural death. Suppose you wake up tomorrow, that you are not one of the quarter million, just check, you really alive? If you are, will you give yourself at least one big smile? Will you? Will you <laughs> And if quarter million people died, at least five to ten million people lost somebody who's dear to them. You check those four, five, ten people around you who matter to you, if all of them are alive today, will you give yourself one more big smile? And now, it's eleven-thirty, still alive <laughs> One more big smile? I want you to understand, what is ticking off here is not the clock, it's your life. Your life is ticking away. We are trying to do so many things, but the most important thing about we being here today is we are alive. Yes or no? Is this the most important thing? Everything else secondary? Everything else is made up and cooked up in your head. The only reality is you are alive right now. If you cannot celebrate that, if you cannot enjoy that, then rest is too much drama, it is going to fail anyway. This is fundamental management for you. If you just manage this, every time you look at your watch, check. If you are alive, you must smile. <laughs> if you are dead, I will excuse you. important. If you watch people die, over eighty percent of the people on this planet, when the moment of death comes, there is no pain, there is not even fear, but you will see bewilderment on their face. Like this they go, because it's like you went to the cinema, you bought the ticket, went to the cinema, you sat there, during the trailer itself you fell asleep. And when they turn on the lights after the movie, you woke up. What? It's already over <laughs> This is how most people are dying. This is the most unfortunate way to die. Because before you open your account, it's over. Your own thought and emotion kept you so busy, you thought this is life. But when the moment of death comes, suddenly you know, the drama that you were turning on within you looked so real, but the moment lights are going off, then you know this is not it. Your psychological drama, we can all sit in the same place and each one of us can have something different going in our minds right now, yes or no? So obviously what's happening in your mind is your psychological reality, it's not existential, it has no existential basis. It is in this sense people are telling you be in the moment because there is no basis to your psychological reality. You can make up whatever you want or in other words, your creation, your petty creation has become larger than the magnificent creation of the creator. So spiritual process means you set this anomaly right. You understand your psychological reality is something that you're making up. I'm not saying you should not make it up, you can, but you must be able to switch it off when you don't want. The problem is it's just on twenty-four hours, so it looks like that is the reality. 
it is not the reality, you just making it up. Welcome back. God has spoken. The man is illumined, he's God on earth. I want to address Rachel Woolham's comment. I think she was telling me, if this is correct from my understanding of what I'm seeing, Rachel says she has chronic illness, disease, pain. She's in pain so much. Rachel, please understand because I love you. I am not trivializing your situation. I'm here to tell you a something that is true regardless of who we are and no matter what is happening to anyone. The truth is not a salve. It's not a tincture. It's not a band-aid. Honestly, by Sadhguru, the truth is a killer. I'm not saying that you're dying because you're bucking the truth. But what I am saying is that you're dying because what is happening to you, you're bucking the truth. When I say you're dying is, let me, Rachel, these pains, these chronic illnesses and pains you are having that might make you wish you were dead. Hello, Katina. Oh my God, I haven't spoken or seen Katina since I was 16. Hello, girl. Chronic pain in your body, Rachel, has to do with chronic emotional pain. Looking back in your life, Rachel, you don't have to validate it to me because I know. I know how energy works. That in looking back in your life, you have been dwelling on that which is emotionally painful and it's killing you. What you really want is to let that past of you die so it doesn't kill you presently. What I have just shared with you, no amount of money you can pay for. What you are dwelling on, those emotional hurts and pains, presently is killing you. It's become chronic. Ironic it is that your best life will happen when you let that part of you die. You want help with that? Contact me. I'd be more than happy to pour the love that pours through me into your being, dear. Do you understand? Hello, Elaine, beautiful Elaine. Daniel Christensen, prayers are powerful, but also private. That is delicious like freaking icing on your cake and not meant to be shared with others. You have to be careful that when you, Darnell, what's up, bro? You have to be careful that when you post your private life on Facebook, not only your private life, but you and everyone involved becomes vulnerable to attack. Psychic karmic attack. What I mean by psychic karmic attack means when you open yourself up vulnerably about your personal private life, you open up your sp the spiritual aspect of yourself by saying, I am a victim and I'm trying to get everyone else's attention to join me in my misery and victimhood. And when you get that kind of prayer warrior chain behind you, those you are hoping to save will and can literally physically die. Be careful posting about your illnesses. Commercial break. Let's see who's here. I love acknowledging my sexy, beautiful human family. Natalie's still here. Kim's here. Katerina, Bob, Sonny. Agi, I love me some Agi. Uh, Agi, I'm waiting to hear in your tongue how to say hello, hello. 
I'm just teasing. But if you want to post it, it'd be cute. I love learning. Robert, Pri, Adana, Beth, Beth, if you want to share with me privately about what's happening with you, I would love to rework with you and respond. It's not always about the money, dear. I'm not that selfish. So I'm looking back for... a post made by... I don't see it. I was going to respond to it. I did, but I did not see... Idolist Bar. Let me go see on. Let me go. Let me go stalk Idolist Bar. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm going to add friend you right now. What's up, girlfriend? So let me see. Um, I'm looking for this post because some people's request to me that they hear is important. They they want to know something because it creates a calmness. Beth, if you're still here and you want to respond, please feel free to. Beth says, yes, I would love to. Then I'm going to leave it to you, dear, to contact me as soon as later tonight after I'm done with my presentation. I will likely get to it tomorrow, but do it tonight the way it, you're thinking about it. Life seems hopeless. It's not hopeless, sweetie. I know that in your situation it may. It's not. And I will kick your ass into believing what I'm telling you. I meant kick your ass in a loving way. I will help you see something that you may not, at least in your current state of mind, be able to see. Suddenly, within the silence, the new world simply appears. The new world is not this place out there. Heaven on earth is not this place out there. One day the lion's going to lay down with the lambs and Jesus and I and the lion and the lamb. We're all going to be sitting in the park and Jesus is going to be sitting on the park bench. Now what? That now what is so important. It's probably the greatest point and or question you can ever ask yourself now what? Robert says breathing helps. It is life. Breath is life. So when you find yourself in a situation, joyful, breathe. <gasps> you impregnate the experience to expand and linger. When you find yourself in a not so good situation that you hope to God would die, I have fallen and I can't get up. Breathe, because breathing your way into the experience will breathe you out of the experience and through the illusion. This has me pigeon-held, and I'm grounded, and I can't do it. But yeah, you don't understand. And it's kicking my ass. And you shift. The light of God, the light of breath, Breath is given to us by God. Breath is life. God is life. Illuminates your darkness. And the next thing you know, you become so empowered and showered with the grace I've been speaking about. Are you in a space to be receptive to grace? Are you in a place to try to relive all those worn out insanities about saving face of what you were taught because of pride and ego? Here we go. If something is kicking you in your pants at this era, in this time of your life, I've fallen 
and I can't get up. In order to be able to get up, my friend, the universal law doesn't change for anyone, nor does it fudge. You have to declare your truth, your divinity, and power, and you have to stand up. Being on your knees is great. It creates humility. I, I give up. That's a beautiful posture. It saved my life and my soul as to why I'm a teacher that has come back from the days of old. Again, I am here to win, and I like spinning all of this to you because I love you beyond measure, to have you live in ongoing bliss, joy, and pleasure. It is your greatest treasure when you understand, see, and be in the energy that allows that part of you that is no longer working for you to die gracefully. Are you dying gracefully and tastefully? If not, other than that, you are dying wastefully. And you have a choice. When your choice becomes default, second nature, and you have it, and you grab it, you will chase the white rabbit into the divine whole. Whole. Miss. Bliss. I have that key if you want it. But you have it also, more so inside of yourself. Don't deny yourself. Apply yourself. Try yourself. Strive. Again, it's not about dying. It's more about being alive. And as I said before, earlier, if you're willing to die, to live, it simply requires you to give yourself the time to memorialize that aspect of you that is already dead. But I want to try again. It's already dead. It's said and done. It's your choice. Remember that all things are possible. You must choose to be accountable, responsible, enough to believe, and open your heart to receive.
for you to plan out your life. Welcome back to Center of Light on this Memorial Eve night. Tonight we are talking about I've fallen and I can't get up. Obviously, it's a play on the Life Alert commercial. Right now, you are being alerted in a loving way about your life. What does that mean to you? What does your life mean to you? Never to tri trivialize. I'm always here to empower and to shower you with grace that may you never felt on your face. That I offer you simply a taste of something beautiful and dynamic. God dang it. Damn it. If you want it. Here. I do this for my heart all the time. Join me. As often as you can. Are you willing to die to live? To give yourself a memorial on this Memorial Day Eve? Let me tell you how smart you are, though you acknowledge it or not. Let me tell you how smart you are. You already know the parts of you that are dead. That said, no matter how much you bled, you know it will never come back to life because it's dead. Why do we keep hashing at it? Why do we keep bringing it up, think it's going to change? That's insanity. It doesn't go anywhere except further into the madness of your own ooh, ooh, ah, ah, monkey mind. Ooh, 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 ah, ah. I want my banana. I want my banana. I want my banana. Your loved one that died isn't coming back in the way you think. They will come back to visit you if you open up yourself to a new life, not only yours, but theirs, as the new life on the other side to come back in your life. Expecting them to show back up in their physical way won't bring that new life to you. Same with you. Expecting those ideas, those models to show back up in your life, hoping that you have one last chance at life with your models is killing you, is it not? And you're so smart that you know that these things will never work. But the reason you keep trying and 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 trying again is because that's all you know to do, to write balance, erect your situation. As I said before, erroneous prayer can kill you. Where are my prayer warriors? As you try and try and try and try and try and try, those old world paradigm models 
thinking it's going to finally get you out of your situation. It doesn't work. So what do you do? You die gracefully. I'm scared. Goddamn right you are. You should be. Because you're moving in to new territory. So if you live in the outside world, you want to tap out. Uncle, uncle, I give, I give. Oh my God, this is poetic. I can feel it coming into my bones. When you want to tap out, someone's twisting your arm. Life is twisting your arm behind your back. Oh my God, uncle, 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 I give, I give. When you tap out. But when you tap in, you say, oh my God, I live, I live, I live. There ain't no uncle squeezing your arm. Life is no longer squeezing it out of you. Squeeze, life is no longer squeezing the life out of you. It's by your purview of whether you are choosing to live. <laughs> Do I need to say it? Or choosing to die. It's not a dress rehearsal. Are you joyful? Are you gleeful? Are you blissful? Are you ecstatic? I'm ecstatic. I love everything about my life. I love what I do. I love what I have learned no longer to do. Yard work. I fucking hate it. That part of me has died. I've created situations for myself to where I live in a guest house. I don't have to do yard work. In fact, check this out. My mechanic, for my an auto mechanic, who literally lives behind this picture from me, uh, excuse me, this way, not lives, but his shop, is 100 feet Cuts my grass. I didn't ask him to do this. Once a week, I wake up and I drive into my driveway. My grass is cut. And I tell him, think he says, it's not a problem. I could pay him, but he doesn't want it. How did I manifest this for myself? Because I've affirmed to myself years ago through yard work, my father who called me on the phone when he made me do yard work. I swore to myself in my adult life, I will never do anything that does not bring me joy. And now my mechanic across the street is cutting my grass. This is what these spiritual principles I offer relentlessly will do for you. Sounds like nonsense. I understand. Until you implement it in your life, you will never understand it. But I hand it to you, and it's up to you to do with it what you like. So, Mosad Guru, I love this man. Right now, he is my lifeblood. Right now, he is my manna. If you are capable of causing depression to yourself, I am saying this not without any concern for your illness or not due to lack of compassion because that is the nature of what's happening to you. If you are causing depression to yourself, you are able to generate substantial amount of intense emotions and thoughts, but in the wrong direction. If you don't have very strong emotions, very intense thoughts about something, you cannot get depressed. It is just that you are generating thoughts and emotion which work against you, not for you. 
So you are strong enough to cause depression to yourself because… What's something you're afraid of? Giving the wrong impression. I'm afraid of running out of gas somewhere. You're introverted. Extroverted. Medium to well. Rare. Cautious. Adventurous. <laughs> Anxiety just drifted away. For you to cause a mental illness for yourself, unless you're pathologically ill, which is just a small number of people, rest are all self-created. Most of them are self-created. A few are pathologically ill, it's… they cannot help it. It just comes from within because of genetic and other factors. Almost everybody here, if we train them towards a certain kind of thought process and emotion and push them a little bit with the outside situations, almost everybody will go lose their mental balance. They will become clinically ill. They can be driven to madness, I'm saying, because the line between sanity and insanity is very thin. People keep pushing it. You get angry, you're pushing the line. It's a thin line. In fact, when you get angry, you know you're pushing the line. That's why the expression, I was mad at somebody. You're not mad at somebody, you're just going mad. You cannot be mad at somebody. You're just pushing your sanity, the boundaries of sanity and moving into insanity for a certain period of time and coming back. You do one thing, every day you try this, ten minutes a day, try intense anger on somebody. What? <laughs> you will see in three months' time, you will be clinically there. <laughs> yes? Just try it if you want because if you keep pushing the line, you go mad and you come back, you go mad and you come back, one day you're not able to come back, that's all. One day you're not able to turn back, then you're clinically ill. You must understand even if you got angry for a moment, you're already ill. Maybe you don't get the certificate of diagnosis. They don't slap a certificate on you that you are gone, but you are going, isn't it? You think it's your right to throw tantrums? You think it's your right to get angry with people? You think it's your privilege to be depressed so that you'll get attention from somebody? You keep playing this, one day you will not, able, you will not be able to turn back. Keep crossing the line every day, one day you will see you cannot cross back. That day you need a doctor. Till then, everybody needed a respite from you, but the day you can't cross back, they get the respite because now they can catch you and give you to a doctor. Otherwise, you're temporarily going mad every day, many times a day. They cannot even send you to an asylum. They have to bear with you, your family, your friends, your people around you. If you get at least truly clinically ill, we can hand you over. There's one temple in Tamil Nadu, you know, where they chain you and keep you. Where there is no hospital, no psychological for ailments, there is no hospital, there is a temple that somebody created which is supposed to push people back into sanity. So, families just take them and leave them there, they're shackled and left in the temple. You give them some money, they'll feed you and you're just there like an animal, tied up. I think if hospitals were run like this, lot of people wouldn't go crazy they would maintain their sanity. <laughs> right now it's too deluxe. <laughs> if you make hospital extremely comfortable, it'll become an incentive to become sick. 
and you have incentives in your life to become ill, right from your childhood. You got the maximum attention only when you fell ill. When you are happy, they screamed at you. When you sque squealed in joy, they screamed back at you, adults. You <laughs> then boo 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 boo. <laughs> when you are a child, physical illness is good because you'll get attention from your mother and father and everybody around you and you don't have to go to school on that day. <laughs> so you learn the art of falling physically ill. But once you get married, you learn the art of becoming mentally ill <laughs> because if you want to get attention, you go sit in a corner act depressed, people will pay attention to you. So, you pl keep playing this game, one day you're not able to cross the line back, that day you're clinically ill. Unfortunately, in many ways, not just in the way that I said now, in many different ways, I would say seventy percent of illnesses on the planet, all kinds are self-created. Even if you get an infection, there is a way. If you keep yourself in a certain way physically and mentally, the virus and the bacteria will not work the same way as it works upon somebody else. If you set yourself like this, no matter what's happening, anyway, I have to go and do this, this and this, there's no break from that. The last twenty-nine years, I have not been able to cancel one program because I'm running temperature, I got a cold, I got this, I got that. It doesn't matter what's happening, what you have to do, you anyway have to do. You can't turn back on that. Either out of your commitment or you have a boss like that. One or one way or the other, if it happens, then you will see you will not at all fall sick so often. Because if you have temperature, you still have to go. If it's summer, you still go, right? No, a lot of people don't go. It's a little hot outside, they don't go and work. <laughs> little cold outside, they don't go and work. A little raining, they won't go and work. A snowflake, they will not go and work. This is just weather. So for every change in weather, if you have the comfort of covering yourself in a blanket and lying down, once you create that, your body will learn to fall sick as often as possible. If you just keep it this way, it doesn't matter what it is, anyway I have to go and do what I have to do, you will see your body will just bounce back as quickly as possible, even if it gets the worst kind of infections. So, you just have to set the necessary conditions for health, necessary in incentives for health, both for yourself and your children if you have them. Do not set incentives for sickness. <coughs> the child is sick, observe him from a distance, never go curl him. He knows that's the worst time of his life and he knows he has to get well soon. And give him the best attention when he is joyful. You will see, he naturally learns from within. His very chemistry will learn that it pays to be joyful, it doesn't pay to be sick. If you make this very clear to your own biology, to your own chemistry and to everybody around you, you will see people will not fall sick as often as they are right now. So set that up for yourself. You will see you will get healthy. If you can turn your mind this way, you can also turn it this way, I want you to understand this. No, no, I am like this because my father abused me when I was seven years of age. If you know all that bullshit, you can as well turn yourself around, isn't it? It's time. You must understand, mentally, physiologically, chemically, energy-wise, you must clearly understand it doesn't pay to be sick 
unhappy, depressed. It doesn't pay. To be joyful and ecstatic, it pays. If you make this clear to all these people inside, they will all behave properly. Life alert, I've fallen and I can't get up. I did not research, put together this presentation. I swear to you, all I went by was my brother Elwood's suggestion. Keith do a show titled, because he now knows my banter and my wit and my way. Keith do a show and I've fallen, I can't get up. Life alert, the commercial. I've fallen and I can't get up. Sadhguru just echoed what I said earlier. Be careful with your prayer warriorship. I know that when I profess that I'm sick, I don't have to go to school. So you create a disposition of energy that will respond via karma, which means action. When you're married, you create mental attention. You crave mental attention, so you go sit in the corner. So forth and so on. Be careful, prayer warriors. When you get enough people behind you, hoping they help you save your loved one or yourself, the law doesn't change for anyone. It's about consciousness. I'm going to do one more short video on Sadhguru. It's important. This is going in shortly. It's going to be two hours into this presentation. And I love it. I, I, it's not about time for me. I'm sitting in this chair because it feeds me. And I hope that it feeds you for whatever time, throughout the duration that you can stick around. But after I go into this video, I'll play one more song, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to go into vessel mode. One thing that is resounding in me is that I'm going to go further into myself without any reservations. I'm going to let happen what happened. I'm not going to restrict nor filter, which I shouldn't anyway, which I really don't. But what I'm really saying is I'm going to go farther into myself where there are no boundaries. I don't even have, I have no idea what's going to come forth. I do know that to heed this warning it's not going to be a band-aid, salve, or tincture. The truth is not about making you comfortable. The truth is about you dying. A dying unto yourself that no longer serves you. It can be taken as wisdom, or it can be taken as someone's trying to kick you in your ass, and forcing you to do something. I had this conversation with my now 14-year-old boy as of tomorrow about this very, very topic, this very, very thing I'm, I'm sharing with you. I said, son, when your dad shares something with you, at your age of rebellion at 14 years old, I'm not trying to buck you current. I'm trying to save you a lot of headache, disease, illness, I've fallen and I can't get up. Models. That's what I'm trying to do. You can rebel against your dad. Guess what? You're going to learn it either way. But your dad, because he loves you, is trying to tell you something. How you spin that is going to be your, either your lose or win of that. He said, I understand, Dad. I said, congratulations. You are now an adult. It may sound like, my dad's on my ass, which I'm never. I give my, my kid all the room he needs. But when dad, as his steward, steward, needs to set in, I'm like, buddy, what are you doing? <laughs> You're in a parking lot. Cars are moving about. I know you like your phone. I like my phone. I know you like your phone. Cars are moving about. Bro, what are you doing? Next thing you know, he gets it. Do you get it? I hope you do. I'm not saying you don't. But if you won't, eventually, you will get it.
God forbid, it comes at a deadly price. I have fallen and I can't get up. You can always get up, but you have to want to get up and no longer play victim. I'm in my situation because most people have no idea that the reason they're in the situation is because what they think it is because of. You're in the situation simply because of unconsciousness. Keith, you don't understand. You don't understand. That's why you're in the situation. If you understood, not me, but the truth of it all, truthfully, you would not be in that situation ever at all. I don't make the laws. I follow them. Going to be right back. Sadhguru. Um, let me do Sadhguru first, Lavender Soul Song. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to go into Vessel Mode and tap into Spirit. I don't know what it's about. I just know that I'm feeling that. Keith, use those very words to see where it goes. So we'll go from there. Sadhguru. God on earth. God on earth. Hey, what's happening, Sad Guru? I'm Sky. Ryan uh, was my brother. I want to know about the transformation people go through when they come to your center, because I saw a huge change in him when he came back. What is this all about? Is it a fact uh, that in the evolutionary process of life upon this planet, you okay with evolution, okay? Because I come from Tennessee, so I'm asking you. <laughs> in the evolutionary process, is it true that we as human beings we are on top of the pile hmm? of all the creatures. We are supposed to be the peak. Maybe there's something more to be done, but right now we are on the top. But is it also true that whenever human beings utter the word human, they're always talking in terms of, oh, I'm only human. The word human is always related to the limitations of being human. Very few people ever have used this word, I'm human, referring to the immensity of being human, always the limitations of being human. So, somewhere we miss the fundamental point. The point is this, is it true that every other creature on this planet a worm, an insect, a bird, an animal, with a millionth of our brain, they're conducting their life process quite well. Hello? Yes. Are they? When I say life process, we are born, they are born, just like that. We grow up, they grow up. We make a living, they make a living. We may reproduce, they reproduce. We do all this with enormous fuss. They simply do it. Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> Every simple thing we're doing it with enormous fuss. They are simply doing it. Different various processes of life and death, they are doing it without fuss. We are doing everything with great fuss. Is this a sign of highest level of intelligence, I'm asking? We are supposed to be the most intelligent and there is no question that we have the most evolved neurological process on the planet, yes? We have the most evolved neurological system that we must be able to sense and feel and experience and perceive, understand and express things in the highest possible way. But no other creature on the planet is struggling like the human creature right now. This is simply because you have been given a super, super computer. Do you agree with me 
that this is the most sophisticated gadget on the planet. Yes. Not the iPhone, the eye <laughs> But now the question is, have you read the user's manual? Hmm? That's all. People have not read the user's manual for the most complex machine on the planet and somehow blundering through, somehow trying to use it. Everything is a problem. Tell me one thing that human beings are not suffering. If they're poor, they suffer their poverty. You make them rich, they suffer the taxes. If they're not educated, they suffer that. Put them to school, lot of suffering. Not married, they suffer that. Get them married. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I didn't say a thing, okay? <laughs> No children, some people suffer that. Children, daily suffering. So you seem to be suffering every aspect of life. So if you offer death, will you go joyfully? No, you will suffer that. So tell me one thing that we are not suffering. Now people view philosophies, life is suffering. No, no, life is not suffering, nor is it a joy. It's simply there, it's a phenomena. If you write it, it feels fantastic. If you're crushed by it, it feels terrible. So are you riding the wave of life or are you being crushed by it? That's all the question is. So for this to happen, what is it that human beings are suffering? I'm sorry, what's your name? Huh? Sky? Oh, you're a big guy. <laughs> you're a big guy. <laughs> sky. When was the last time somebody poked you with a dagger, even though you're living in Los Angeles? <laughs> that is a long time ago <laughs> So I'm saying, I'm asking you, how much suffering for any individual is actually coming from outside? Minuscule, isn't it? The rest is all on self-help. If they sit, they will suffer, if they stand, they will suffer, if something happens, they suffer, if nothing happens, they suffer. So what they're suffering is their own psychological process. One's own thought and emotion has become such a huge suffering. How you think and feel? How you think and feel, should it not be determined by you? Hmm? Hello? What happens within you? Should it happen, not happen the way you want it? Can you see me, Sky? Where am I? Tell me, use one hand and point out where I am. Ah, you got it wrong. <laughs> you know I'm a mystic, huh <laughs> Now, these lights are fo this light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in the retina, you know the whole story, right? Where do you see me right now? Within yourself. Where do you hear me right now? Within yourself. Where have you seen the whole world? Within yourself. Everything that ever happened to you, pain and pleasure happen within you, joy and misery happen within you, agony and ecstasy happen within you, even light and darkness is actually happening within you. What happens in the world may not happen the way you want it, but at least what happens within you must happen your way, isn't it? So if what happens within you is not happening your way, fundamentally we have not figured what is the nature of our life. Without understanding, without understanding even the fundamental of our existence, we are trying to live. Is it true, I'm asking you once again, is it true both pain and pleasure originates from within you? There may be a stimulus from outside, but all human experience comes from within you, isn't it? What's coming from within you must happen your way, otherwise you're just an out-of-control situation. So, my entire work and the fundamental nature of what's offered is called inner engineering. That is, we have engineered the world in so many ways. This has brought us enormous levels of comfort and convenience. 
do you agree with me that we are the most comfortable generation enjoying most incredible conveniences that no generation could ever dream of? Yes or no? What even royalty did not have a hundred years ago, today ordinary citizens are enjoying it, isn't it? What is the chariot that you drive? How many horses, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying even emperors could not do four hundred horses, all right <laughs> So, all this is going waste on humanity simply because their experience of life is not enhanced because your well-being will never come from outside. From outside, you can create comfort, you can create convenience, but you cannot create well-being. Well-being can only happen from within you because human experience is created from within. Doesn't matter what is the nature of your experience, whatever it is unpleasant or pleasant, both are being made from within you. But if you are in charge of yourself, would you create pleasantness for yourself or unpleasantness for yourself? Highest level of pleasant. If there was a choice between misery and blissfulness, what would you choose for yourself? Please, you must make a choice, I'm going to bless you right now. <laughs> misery or blissfulness? Yeah, at least for yourself, it's definitely highest level of pleasantness. What you want for your neighbor may be debatable, depending upon what they did today <laughs> But what you want for yourself is hundred percent clear, isn't it? Why such a simple thing is not happening? Simply because this cerebral activity in the process of evolution, it is new. It is a new happening, this… this big brain. When I say new, just a few million years, but in the evolutionary scale, it is new. So we have an intelligence for which we don't have a stable enough platform. You don't need anybody to torture you, isn't it? Hello? You're on self-help <laughs> You don't need any outside help. You can sit in one place by yourself and make a hell out of it <laughs> Because your own intelligence is turned against you. You can call it by many exotic names. You can call it misery, you can call it depression, you can call it by variety of diagnosis. But essentially, your intelligence has turned against you. Once your intelligence turns against you, nobody, no power in the universe is going to save you because wherever we take you, you will be miserable. Some people are thinking one day they will go to heaven and they will be all right. I'm asking you, do you have any proof that you are not already in heaven and messing it up? <laughs> do you have any proof? No. Maybe you're already in heaven and making a mess out of it. Because if you have an out-of-control mind, no matter where you're taken, you will make a mess out of it, isn't it? Just imagine hundred years ago, how people lived in this same place and how you're living. Is there any damn thing to complain about in comparison? Hello? Oh, but we are whining like crazy, huh? We are whining like nobody else on the planet. So the problem is not of the outside. Outside situations are there. Some situations will go the way we want, some will not go. That's how it is. Even if you're just two people in the family, does everything happen just the way you want it? No, that can never happen. Outside will never happen a hundred percent the way you want it. We can manage it to some extent. But at least what happens within you must happen the way you want it. If right now what happened within you was happening the way you want it, would you keep yourself at the highest level of pleasantness or no? That's all that happened to him. Even though death confronted, it didn't matter because what's happening within you is happening the way you want it. No magic, just engineering. Every time I hear this man speak, I'm at a loss for words. Truly, Sadhguru said,
Sadguru means earthly saint. He's living in the bliss of God. He is untouchable. Untouchable. No different than Jesus, though Jesus went through his trials, life. That was then, this is now. This man is untouchable. He is a bridge between heaven and earth. And what has just been shared with you via Sadhguru is, oh my God, you have no idea. Sadhguru says, this is why he's untouchable. I know everything he says is, is the it. When I do pass, I will stick around the earth for another 80 years to collect all of those who have at least had a moment with me. This will be your last incarnation. Not that the earth is not fun and cool. Eternity is where we're going. Back home. And you don't have to die and be a good little boy or good little girl to go to heaven. You can have that here now. Heaven on earth. I can have the bliss and the it of it all while I am encased in this meat suit. Sadhguru has to be that, or otherwise he could not be the teacher he is. How can he teach us how to be the bliss of heaven on earth if he is not that himself? I'm going to go into vessel mode. Thank you all for sticking around. Let's see if there's any new dialogue. Peter Coyle, Sonny, Lee Gill, everybody. Crystal Huggins is still here. Sana still here. Robin Harrison, Peter Coyle. So tonight's presentation is one of my finest. I may say so myself because of, I use that measurement stick by how I feel inside. I didn't plan this out. It, in fact, I just grabbed some Sadhguru videos that saw, that I thought talked about having a better life and how awesome did it just perfectly weave itself into this beautiful intention, not only of mine, but also in yours as the mirror image of me, Sadhguru, you, we, to show up for this present holy moment. I am grateful. I'm going to go inside. I have no idea what's going to come out. I know it's going to be unbridled. Take it how you like. I don't know why I'm saying this. I just don't know. I know it's going to be deliberate, intentful, conscious, hoping that even I grasp something. Let's see what happens. Happy Memorial Day, beautiful ones. Are you celebrating the death of those you have lost in war or in life, which many have seen and still do as a war, hence the word trials and tribulations? Or are you celebrating the life of those that you have loss. You haven't lost anything. What you have lost is your expectation that someone or some idea has to live forever. The only thing that never changes in the universe is that things always change. Are you with that program effortlessly moving down the life stream as it pushes you along effortlessly? If you're not, you're killing yourself. Ask a salmon, swing upstream to spawn, but yet it struggles and efforts mightily it does, but yet only to die by the bears who eat them. Analogous to the human condition. But it is of your volition to choose the effort and strain, struggle and pain, 
or effortless ease and life I will gain. It can be simply that simple. What else is there to say? The light dismay. It's you. It's always you. And no one wants to own that stuff. That tough, that rough, that gruff you may always vent. Yanava, I have been sent to offer you something of beauty. But it requires your diligent duty to ever understand what that is. Do you want a piece of that divine pie? When you say yes, so goes along with it some cool whip or cool topping as what's being offered to you now in the form of a divine dessert. The sweets of your manna but it requires you being in a state of manner have you not had enough of the bullshit if your answer is I have you have to die and I'm scared goddamn right you are new ground New territory is always scaring, like the roller coaster you were coming upon. But when you finally rode it, conquered that mountain, that brisk movement, and you realized when it was done, you came out on the other side just fine, yet exhilarated. Mm. That means you become. An alchemist. You've changed a something into a something else. Something so solid and tangible that is fear and scared you to death into something so subtle and spiritual that it blisses you out into life. You may be one who is physically dying. Don't lose sight of your new birth. This will help you to die gracefully, tastefully, and not wastefully. Become conscious of your mortality. When you are conscious of your mortality and you are real with yourself, your life gets very delicious very quick because nothing is ever overlooked. You don't take things for granted. Grant it when you understand such very simple models, wisdoms, and basic truths. As the truth, you become the living testimony. You become a conscious part of the plan. And so your life becomes grand as you move ever higher and aspire. When you allow the old paradigm self to expire, to die. It's not working. It's not working, dear one. It's not working. What are you willing to do? Are you willing to die to live? But I have too much pride. Set that aside. Happy Memorial Day. Live in your Leela, live in your divine play. Again, I say, there is no situation outside the grace of spirit. But it requires you to hear it, this message, this imparting this blessing on the Memorial Day of all that within you that is overdue for you to let go 
die, and put to rest. Spirit always wishes you all the best. I love me some you. Center of Light will be very active this coming week. Tuesday, Victoria Smith. I have a full week. I love you beyond measure. I love you into your pleasure, even if that means helping you find some part of you that I will help you die. Why not try? Apply. Keith, I have no hope. My life is bleak. Dear one, because of what you think is broken makes you the meek. I am here to help you. I love you beyond measure. Be well.